What's up, family? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Yes Chef. I am your host, Big Chef Dro, and today we're going to get into these oxtails. Now, I do understand that throughout different cultures, oxtails are prepared differently and they also taste differently. I don't really think there's a wrong way to prepare oxtails as long as the meat's nice and tender. But I have came up with the recipe that is not only flavorful, not only savory, but so robust. So I'm gonna get into that and I want you to sit back, get into it, come with me. Let's cook. Okay, so welcome back. Let's get into the oxtails. Um, so the star of the show, the oxtails. Now, let me go over this real quick with you. Uh, there are t three types of oxtails that you can buy. And one of them is the frozen oxtails. Don't buy frozen oxtails. Uh, they don't cut them uh, thick. They're they're really thin. You don't get a lot of meat on them. Uh, they are cheaper than the other ones, but just not a good quality, not good presentation. So stay away from frozen oxtails. Uh, the second one is from Publix. Now, I found that the Publix type of oxtails are so much better in quality. As you can see, they cut them real thick. Um, so they're, they're really tall um, oxtails and very meaty. And Publix does a great job at you know trimming a lot of the fat off. Now, this is uh, 1.82 pounds, almost two pounds, and it's $12.72. That's the deal for some oxtails. The third oxtails are the ones you get in the package. Now, those things are so full of fat, you will spend a lot of time cutting them off. I have bought them and I have um, cooked them. I don't really have a problem with them. It's just that, you know, it's a lot of fat, but they are pretty good. Um, but you do get a lot of small ones in those packets as well, which by the time you cook them, the meat isn't even on the bone. So, I mean, you know, if I'm going to buy oxtails, I'm going to buy the big ones um, so that the meat doesn't just fall off and I'm stuck with a bone. All right, so those are the three types of oxtails. Now, I have cleaned these and I have uh, taken a little bit more fat. I did trim them a little bit more uh, after I, uh, right before I cleaned them. So, but they do a great job at taking the fat off. So I'm gonna get this out of the way and we're gonna go over the, uh, the ingredients. Okay, so the uh, ingredients, there's a lot of spices. Um, here, so let's go over them real quick. So first and foremost is the truffle oil. So I'm gonna use oil, sometimes I just use plain olive oil, but I'm gonna use some truffle oil here. Now the oil is going to allow, you know, all of the seasonings to adhere to the meat. And this truffle oil is actually gonna give it uh, a nice bit of a flavor to it. And so what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm going to create here is a level of flavors. So, you know, you're gonna get different levels when you bite into this, okay? Now, I have my um, onion powder, I have some black pepper, I have some garlic powder, and I have some uh, ground cumin that I'm gonna add to it as well, and then some allspice, some dry thyme leaves. I will put fresh thyme leaves in the when, when I start to cook them, but I'm just gonna put you know a little bit of this in there, just to kind of give it you know a, a little bit of a, a of a of a flavor during the marinating process. And here I have my seasonings, which is as you know if you're used to watching this channel, that's Morton season all and accent mixed together. Then I have some uh, turmeric, uh, some ground turmeric, and some paprika. OK, now I'm also going to use some Worcestershire sauce. This is uh, two tablespoons of Worcestershire. Um, I'll probably add a little bit more when I start cooking it. I'm going to see how the marinade comes out. What's the, the, the uh, what's the how does it smell um, right before I get finished cooking? And if I can smell it too much, then I won't add any. But I'll decide at that time what's going to happen. 
All right. So this is a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Now, um, I've had oxtails that taste just like vinegar and it's just not a good taste. So but I'm going to put a tablespoon in there and I'm going to allow it to sit for a day or so so that um, it can break down the meat a little bit better for me. Not too much, not too much vinegar. Remember that it will taste like vinegar. And then I have some fresh chopped garlic. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create this sort of a. Uh, uh, of a marinade. It's not going to be too wet or anything. And today is Saturday. I'm going to cook the oxtails on Monday. So I'm going to let that sit for like a day and a half in there. Maybe, um, you know, maybe, maybe close to two days. Okay. So let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my vinegar, my red wine vinegar. And then I'm going to add my Worcestershire. and then my uh, truffle oil. So I don't wanna put the truffle oil in first. I wanna kinda get that in so that everything is not too, uh, so that the uh, truffle oil doesn't really seal all of the uh, liquid out. All right, so we'll go ahead and start adding the um, dry ingredients and we'll go ahead in with the uh, garlic first. And it doesn't make a difference how you you know, put these, put your dry ones in, uh, just get what you have and put them on in there. And then I'll go ahead and use some of this all spice. And as always, uh, the type of flavor you want uh, is according to how much you put in it. Yeah, you know, so uh, this all spice is a really good, um, has a really good flavor to it. So put as much as you like or as little as you like. Then we'll go in with the cumin. I don't want to cover up the allspice too much, and I don't want to have the cumin overriding um, anything as well. So just a little bit of that. I'll go in with my, with my um, thyme, and I'll do that in my hand, and that's just about it, you know, and I'll just spread that through. Um, you don't want too much of that in there to overpower. Thyme and rosemary will overpower almost anything. So some turmeric and I'll just put a little bit of that in there. And then my uh, paprika. I actually changed my mind and I'm going to use uh, some smoked paprika. So um, I'm going to use the smoked, the smoked paprika instead. So let's uh, put some of that in there. Let me just open this up. Right. Then some black pepper. Some garlic. onion powder and last but not least the the, um, the Morton's uh, seasonal and mixed with the accent salt and then we'll go ahead and just mix this up So there you have it all mixed up. I'm going to put some saran wrap over the top of it, put it in the fridge, and we will see you on Monday to start the cooking process. All right, family, welcome back. This is Monday. The oxtails have been sitting in the seasonings, just marinating. 
it's ever since Saturday. So today is the day we're gonna go ahead and cook them up. As you see, what a beautiful color that they have on it. So let's go ahead and get into the ingredients on, um, on today on what we're gonna use uh, to finish this process and cook these oxtails. Uh, so first off, I have uh, some, some wine, just cheap oak leaf wine. This is a Shiraz. Um, I usually use Cabernet, they didn't have any. Nothing wrong with a Shiraz. Um, then I have um, some chopped up onions and uh, tri-colored uh, peppers in there that I'm gonna use as well. I got um, almost a whole stick of butter, unsalted, and then some all-purpose flour. I have another two tablespoons of uh, Worcestershire. And then I have some fresh thyme. If you remember, I put some dry thyme in there, just a little, about a, about a teaspoon worth of it uh, in there on Saturday. And I told you I was gonna use some fresh thyme today. So there is that. And then I have some, um, then I have some uh, broth, beef broth. This is the base. Uh, that I use it's uh, better than bullion really good stuff. I've been using it for a couple of years now Maybe maybe three or four years now uh, Really really good stuff. So that is what I'm using for my uh, broth for my beef uh, base broth and then uh, last but not least I'm going to use Some uh, some more truffle oil if you remember I did coat it with truffle oil uh, on Saturday and I'm gonna just put this in the pan uh, so we can start browning these oxtails up so I'm gonna go ahead and just coat this pan with uh, some of this uh, truffle oil and uh, they, they call this a Dutch oven this is my mother brought me this about three years ago and this is probably my third time using it so let's see how this turns out All right, so the, this Dutch oven pot is as hot as I need it to be. I don't want it too scorching because I don't want it to burn the meat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place that in there. have enough room and all of that down there I'm just gonna I'm just gonna scrape all of that goodness out of there that is some prime juices right there man I can't let that go to waste all right then once these brown, I'm just gonna go ahead and put them right back into this into this bowl. Once I brown them up a little bit. You see all that, all that goodness down there at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these out, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw these uh, these onions and peppers in there now, and I'll start lifting some of that off the bottom of that with the onions and peppers. Go ahead and add some of this wine.
and all that's on the bottom is going to just cook into these peppers and onions. Now I'm going to reduce, I'm going to reduce this wine down uh, significantly before I move on to the roux process. Okay, so this wine has um, really reduced down. Now, what has happened is all of that wine has cooked in to the onions and the peppers. As you, if you can see the discoloration on the onions and the peppers. So this is going to be a flavorful, savory bite just with the onions and peppers alone. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and go in with my butter. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to get that in there pretty good. And I'm going to start putting my, well, let me do just so you folks know exactly how much to do. I'm going to go in with, with one tablespoon of flour. Okay. Let that cook a little bit. Let all this butter melt down. And then I'll go in with a little bit more. I don't want it to be too thick. I just want to have a little substance to the gravy as I cook it. Uh, when I serve it up, I want it to have a little substance to it, a little, little thickness. As you see, all this browning going on on the bottom from the, um, from the flour as well. That's that goodness right there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding my, um, my uh, beef broth. And I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to add... I'm gonna add a little bit more of this. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this wine to it. Just for the heck of it. Alright. And I'm gonna go ahead. Now this is four cups right here. This is a whole quart. Four quarts right here. Go ahead in with this Whiskershire. I didn't want to put the, I was going to put the Whiskershire sauce in there uh, uh, before I put the wine in the first time when I was deglazing it. But I didn't want that Whiskershire to, I didn't want that bite to be in the onions and peppers. I wanted that wine to be in that onions and peppers bite. But I'm, I'm adding it for just a little bit more flavor, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the oxtails back in there. Now, I came up with this recipe in my head. And in my head, it sounded good. So, <laughs> this is going to be my first time tasting oxtails done this way. I mean, I've done a variation of it this way, but but I mean, as far as um, you know, the different seasonings and 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 things that I'm using this time, as opposed to other times. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this time off in there, and let's get that off in there. Now I'm gonna have to go in and fish out time stems, which is always a pain in my behind. But for that flavor, you can't. Can't argue with it, getting that flavor in there. All right, so these bad boys are going to cook. I'm going to just stir them occasionally um, just to make sure as it thickens up, it doesn't start scorching the bottom, which is never a good thing. Uh, so I will watch them intently, and it'll, this will probably take about four hours. 
uh, to do and to get it where it needs to be. So um, we'll be back uh, once these are done, which is going to be about four hours away. All right. Okay, everybody, and here we go with the finished product. So I went ahead and plated some up with the ones that I cooked in the Dutch oven. As you can see, just beautiful, tender, juicy oxtails, so flavorful. Um, so just to let you know, I got this here because I cooked two different types. I cooked this one in the crock pot and I cooked this one in the Dutch oven. The one in the crock pot, really tender, really is, falls off the bones. But for whatever, for whatever reason, it didn't render a lot of the fat in. And I, and I never noticed that until today when I cooked these in the Dutch oven for the first time. These, you know, there's really not a lot of fat left on them. They cooked in and rendered down really good. Whereas this one has, you know, a lot of fat on it still. Um, and the ones I tasted earlier were really full of fat. I don't mind it. Some people do. But I just felt that, that I should show you the difference in that. I mean, these literally are, are really, really good. Uh, they both are delicious. They, they, this one here, I think I like the Dutch oven. Uh, there is a little pull, but I like that because a lot of times when you cook oxtails, a lot of times you just pull the bone out because they just fall off the bone. These aren't falling off the bone. These are on there really good. And I mean, I think these are the best oxtails I've ever made. So uh, just to, just wanted to let you know, uh, wanted to let you see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and dress these up. I pulled a lot of that uh, onions and peppers from the bottom of the pot. And I'm just gonna put these on there uh, because this, this gravy is, is just absolutely wonderful. So I'm gonna hit it with that. And I'll just pour this down there into the uh, rice. And I just made some, some light red kidney beans to go with that yellow rice. And so there you have it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. These are the best oxtails I've ever made, hands down. And I'm not just saying that. These are really, really good. This, is, this was a real good experience. Um, so folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, to yes, chef, I want to thank you. I want to welcome you and I want to, uh, and I hope that you will come back and look at some more of our videos. And, but if you like this content, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button for me. And if you're interested in all of, uh, all of my videos, if this is a channel that you wouldn't mind supporting, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification button so that you'll be up to date on all the other videos that I am putting out as well. So with that being said, folks, once again, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. And until the next video, peace.